Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Ma Capital uh, with your weekly check-in. Today is Tuesday, September 12th, around 7 o'clock New York time. U.S. markets are closed. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at the CPI. Uh, expectations for tomorrow or for headline CPI to rise by 0.6% month over month versus last month's reading of 0.2. X food and energy expected to rise by 0.2% in line with last month. CPI headline year over year. Expected to rise by 3.6% versus 3.2 last month. And CPI X food and energy year over year expected to rise by 4.3% versus last month's 47 And so obviously this is going to be, you know, an important data point uh, just because this potentially marks the second month in a row where the inflation rate has uh, re-accelerated to the upside and, um, it's also worth noting the print comes in as expected on the 0.6% for the month over month headline. It would be the, the highest print since June of 22. So um, certainly this would, uh, I mean, this could potentially sort of put a little bit of a, of a monkey wrench into the disinflationary camp and uh, certainly cause some alarm, uh, especially if we continue to see, you know, prices of oil and gasoline here in the U.S., uh, continue higher. Uh, just very quickly, when we take a look at the inflation swap market, it gives us a pretty good idea in terms of what the market's thinking about at this point. Um, so when we look at the most recent pricing data from today, um, what we'll see is that inflation swaps, so we look at the 11-1, there's a three-month lag on these, so this represents the August month, 3.649%, basically 3.65%. So the inflation swap market is sort of implying that there's the potential for a higher than expected uh, inflation number when we see it tomorrow. Uh, and just to show you again that this is the number um, at 3.6496. Uh, 3. Um, then, of course, for September, we're looking at 3.44. And for um, October right now, we're looking for 3.1. For November 3.1 and December we're looking for 3.26 and this is important because basically since the last CPI report um, these numbers have now risen uh, rather dramatically over the last couple of weeks um, you know October went from basically 2.9 percent uh, and November went from 2.9 percent so these are uh, meaningful moves up and you know certainly um, we can expect to probably see um, uh, we can probably expect to see these numbers move higher if we continue to see oil prices rise. And um, and you know we have seen oil prices continue to rise, um, and it looks like you know again oil at this moment in time looks to be on a path that potentially heads towards ninety three. Uh, another piece here that's also responsible for. Um, you know, the rise in inflation expectations here is that gasoline prices here in the U.S. have been rising. They rose by about 6.6% last month. And at least as of um, more recently, we can see that, you know, the price of gasoline after coming down some is starting to rise again. And, uh, you know, this is another, another important point uh, to watch and to keep an eye on because certainly higher gasoline prices higher oil prices will contribute to higher inflation rates and again and again we're looking and seeing you know break even inflation expectations um moving up as well to 2.24 percent on the two year which takes us back to levels not seen since april and um certainly the biggest outcome we're likely to see tomorrow is going to be a move on the front of the curve uh certainly you know numbers that come in lower than expected uh, or weaker than expected could certainly result in the two-year trading back down perhaps towards the lower end of the range uh, to around 485 to 490 while a surprise to the upside certainly could result in the two-year breaking out and and moving into a new range potentially to as high as five and a quarter uh, in the coming days and weeks uh, the 10-year also has been moving up again right now it's around 435 certainly um, within the range, obviously, a lighter than expected number could result in the 10-year dropping back to 410. 
while a hotter than expected number could result in the 10 year breaking out to the upside and potentially sets up a move to around 470 over the longer term. And, you know, this is interesting because of how the market is sort of um, set up at this point. And depending upon how this goes tomorrow, uh, you could see a significant move in, um, in, in the 10 to curve, uh, just because we can clearly see that the curve has sort of stabilized in negative 1.10 region, and you can see it's starting to move up. It's consolidating some. And so, you know, the interesting thing here is, is which way does this curve want to break? Um, you know, clearly, if we were to get a, a big move down in the 10 year, that could certainly result in this curve moving lower. Likewise, if we were to get a big move up in the two year that's bigger than the 10 year, that could also result in the curve moving down. Um, likewise, if we were to get a big move down in the two year or a big move up in the 10 year, it could result in the yield curve really beginning to move sharply higher. And that would affect different parts of the markets in different ways. Certainly a, a re-steepening of the yield curve would probably be um, better for financial stocks. Uh, certainly higher oil prices would be beneficial to the energy sector. Uh, and in the meantime, the dollar is obviously also going to be heavily impacted by this uh, news tomorrow as well. I mean, the dollar right now has moved up towards this 104 and a half area, certainly getting close to and getting very close to breaking above 105.60. Certainly hot data could result in a breakout and a move as we, and a potential for the move up towards around 107.80. Uh, and more importantly, when we start looking at currency pairs, again, the euro is not, uh, it just continues to flounder, not that far off from this significant level of um, support around 106 and a half, call it. Uh, a breakdown, a hotter number is certainly going to result in a move lower towards 105. If the number comes in hotter, I think you see the euro break probably this support level at 106 and a half. Um, likewise, you have you know the British pound, which again continues to just hover right below this 125 region. Um, I think ultimately this results in a move down towards 123 on the pound if we get a stronger dollar tomorrow. Additionally, um, this could feed into the Aussie dollar, U.S. dollar. Uh, clearly, Australia's currency has weakened uh, pretty significantly over the last several weeks. Um, certainly a hotter than expected CPI sets a potential move to around, uh, 63 cents. Uh, likewise, a, a move up, you know, you have pretty strong resistance here around 65 cents. Uh, so again, this is sort of where we are. And if we just take a look at the European indices, you know, again, we have a DAX that's really sort of just consolidating sideways at this point, not entirely clear really where the DAX wants to go. Um, you can see that maybe there's a trend line forming here. This is really your big support level, 15,650. Clearly, if we get a move up in rates in the U.S., if we get a move up in the dollar in the U.S., I think ultimately this probably results in markets in the U.S. moving down and that probably feeding over to the European market. It's, the DAX is sitting you know, above support around 15,650, currently around 15,700. So, but it doesn't take much of a move at this point to get the DAX, you know, moving lower. And and really once it starts breaking this range, you can see that there's just not much underneath it. And there's still this gap that's here that needs to be filled. So at some point one would expect that if this trend line persists, if this bearish divergent, if this bearish trend in the RSI persists, that the DAX is going to break this support level and begin to move down towards this 15,300 region. Likewise, on the FTSE, the FTSE did move up a little bit today, but it was unable to hold the gains. And ultimately, you can see that it closed below 7,530, which continues to be a support resistance zone. Um, again, when we look at the, the FTSE, it looks like there's a downtrend to it. It looks like um, more likely than not, the FTSE is going to be heading lower also towards 74, uh, 
7470 with the potential to start heading back down towards 7300. And, um, you know, just to finish off with the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ continues to just hover uh, around this trend line, can't really make um, a meaningful move above this support level at around 15,400. Uh, it looks almost as if, you know, the NASDAQ is just consolidating here at this point. There is certainly the potential for a head and shoulders pattern uh, forming in the NASDAQ 100. And again, um, a break below this 15,175 area, you know, sets us back up to start retesting these lower levels. Um, likewise, if the index is able to uh, gap higher tomorrow, um, take out this high, it sets up for a retracement and a refill of this gap at 15,400. Um, otherwise, it's going to, I think, going to be a tough go for the NASDAQ in the coming days, especially if the dollar rates and oil keep going higher. The Dow Jones just continues to flirt with um, this 34,600 level. It seems to have a, a very strong affinity to holding that area. And uh, again, we can see the trend line is really creeping up now on the Dow. Um, again, very similar sort of head and shoulders looking pattern here. Um, at this point, it's not going to take much of a break below 34,600 to potentially break this trend line, uh, which ultimately sets up for a, a move lower to around 34,200 or so and potentially further from there. And then finally on the SPX, clearly I have marked a head and shoulders pattern. Um, again, the, the S&P just uh, was very, has been very weak. Today had a big reversal day. Uh, there's a gap down here to be filled at 4450, which is just about filled. And again, the S&P takes out this high around 4485, 4490. It can maybe move up and fill the gap at around 4500 or so. But remember, this is also an option expiration week. Friday is quadruple witching. And right now, the big gamma level right now is at 4500. And the um, put wall right now is at 4400. And so that sort of suggests that if you get above 4,500, the index may be capped in this 4,500 to 45 and a quarter range, which may limit the move higher. Uh, likewise, the put wall is down at 4,400. So certainly if you were to get a number that were to surprise the market to the upside and you were to get a drop, there's certainly much further for the index to fall than it is to rise. Anyway, good luck, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.